Hello everyone, this is Giuseppe Sec, and in this video we're going to be talking about network analysis for IoT devices. Assessments for IoT devices are generally going to contain a portion involving network analysis, and that will usually involve Nmap scans that determine what ports are open on the device and fingerprint what services are running on those ports. But with IoT, this isn't always going to be sufficient because devices will often run proprietary or custom or completely new protocols. So it's always good to get a packet analyzer like Wireshark into the mix so that you can more finely see what traffic is being sent to and from the device. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to get a man in the middle between an IP camera and the Android application that is meant to be paired with that camera. The, uh, the camera we're going to be doing this with is going to be the TP-Link Topo C210. And uh, we'll be able to, what we're going to be doing to get the man in the middle is an ARP spoof. And if you are unfamiliar, ARP is the address resolution protocol. It basically, it's a protocol for link layer addresses like MAC addresses that are associated with addresses on the internet layer. So like IPv4. And an ARP spoof is when we make our host send spoof, spoofed ARP messages throughout the local area network. And when we do that, we'll trick packets into resolving to our host, even though those packets weren't meant for us. And then we can just forward those intercepted packets onto their actual intended destination, which effectively makes us a man in the middle. And this will be easy to achieve on Linux if we just install the dsniff package here. That's going to be the same package name for both Arch and Debian-based distributions. But before we start our ARP spoof, we're also going to have to make a couple of tweaks to Linux. Uh, we are going to run a command kind of like that. It's going to make it so that when Linux receives packets that weren't in intended for it, it's not going to just drop them, you know. Um, and then we've got to disable ICMP redirects, ICMP basically being ping, right? And now we can run uh, the ARP spoof command that was installed with dsniff. You can see the I flag is for specifying my interface, and this is my wireless interface. The R flag is going to make this a bi-directional ARP spoof, and the T flag is where we specify the addresses we want to uh, basically place ourselves in the middle of in order to bi-directionally uh, bi uh, intercept the uh, packets that they're sending. And as well, this was this is for the Android, and this is for the IP camera. And we are now uh, ARP spoofing. <laughs> so in Wireshark, I've already applied a uh, filter that's basically saying all uh, packets being sent to and from the IP camera. That's that. Those are the only things that I want to see. And now I can just double click on the wireless interface and see what traffic we are intercepting. And now to just generate some traffic, I'm going to be clicking around in the mobile app. Oh, that's already a lot. So if this is your first time seeing Wireshark, it definitely is a lot to take in. This uh, first panel here is going to be all the packets that we've intercepted, right? And you can see as we go over them, uh, this is kind of like a representation of the TCP IP stack or like all the uh the frames and the, the the data that's enclosed within the actual uh data that was meant to be transmitted and here in this panel we can see that this is the uh these are the bytes that are then being translated into at an ascii format so it's meant to be human readable but in this case with this specific packet it is tls so it is encrypted and this uh yeah from what i've selected here you can see that correlates to this line here within that panel so, um, yeah, this was the actual data that was meant to be transmitted. It's just that it's encrypted. Um, things you want to look for on encrypted data, like this right here. This is HTTP. That's not good. Um, when we're talking about IoT as well, you could even um, intercept the requests that are made when the uh, device is updating its firmware, for example. That could be a way that you could get uh, your hands on proprietary firmware. Oftentimes, uh, the vendor pages will have 
the firmware for you to download but if the device does not allow that 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 is an option for you to get your hands on some firmware uh however this does kind of interest me so i'm going to follow that http stream and yeah this looks like this is uh like an authentication handshake this is for digest authentication basically you can see that here so basically the android is making a request to port 8800 of the uh ip camera and the camera is responding saying hey you're not authorized here's this uh here's this header try and authenticate with me and what digest authentication is well So digest authentication, it's just, it's an, it's an, it's a way to authenticate over HTTP. And, and if we can find a good example here, basically, yeah, the, w w w what's being created is like a hash. Um, it's going to contain a, usually it, it would contain like a hard coded password and a username. And we could actually even see, uh, the username that was being used. Where was that? Right here. Um, so we just have to find out a way to to, to somehow, uh, with like reverse engineering, we would potentially be able to find out the actual hard-coded credentials. But since we're focusing on the network analysis of this, something we could potentially do is get this um, handshake to actually downgrade to basic authentication. And basic authentication is basically... <laughs> It is a base64 encoded payload um, for the credentials. It's going to look, yeah, something like that. That'll be the header that's going to be uh, appended to all subsequent requests after you've uh, done basic authentication. And if you are unfamiliar with base64, It is really easy to uh, to decode. Now we have, yeah, you can see in this case that the user is Aladdin and the password was Open Sesame. So what we're, we can try and do is we could make a uh, like an IP tables rule that would redirect all the packets that we've intercepted in our ARP spoof uh, that are being sent to port eighty eight hundred to then redirect to a port on our local host that is uh, that is running an HTTP server that we control. And that HTTP server that we control, we can have it um, serve up a basic authentication header rather than this uh, digest authentication header. And we can see then if the device is going to follow along with that and actually try to authenticate. And if we have Wireshark running while this whole thing happens, um, will potentially be able, hopefully at least, be able to capture the Base64 encoded uh, username and password. And as you could see previously, it's it's not, it's it's nothing to decode that. So, uh, let's make ourselves a IP tables rule, something like that. We are doing this within the net. We're doing some pre-routing on the wireless interface. We want all, we want TCP being sent to port 8800 to redirect to port 9000. Yeah, that was not my password. <laughs> and now I'm going to go somewhere around there we go. Here's a Python server that I've made. Um, basically, it's saying if the request does not have the authorization header, that it's going to respond with a 401, and it should hopefully initiate that um, authentication handshake with basic authentication. So now I'm just going to run the server. 
and uh, for demonstration purposes, let's do this. And I'm just going to filter back up. And I am going to start capturing again. And you can see we've actually captured that request that has been redirected because of our IP tables rule. And it's now being served up to our server, which is actually just running on port 9000, even though the request was originally intended for the the uh, camera on port uh, 8800. So that was that was cool. And now it does not look It does not look like it took the bait. So we just right click on that then let's follow the TCP stream see if there's anything different to look at. No. It didn't take the bait. <laughs> so that's, uh, in some cases it will actually work and you'll be able to get uh, the credentials that way. But in this case, the, it, it did not. But hopefully that gives you some ideas for things that you can do when you're doing a, like a, a manual analysis of ne of like network protocols that are running with IP device uh, with IoT devices. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that.